This is probably why I will always have an Etsy shop. I keep getting distracted. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> friends we are in a slightly different location today we're actually in my packing room which is the cupboard under the stairs <laughs> very harry potter um yeah this is where i basically run my etsy shop from and the reason that we're in here today is because i am going to be talking all things etsy so Last week I actually made my 1,000th sale on Etsy, which is completely mind-blowing, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, it definitely still doesn't feel very real, although I have to say I'm very busy at the moment, so the work is real. <laughs> but I definitely have imposter syndrome about like so many things, but running a shop especially, I feel like I... I, I struggle to label myself a businesswoman, um, but that's the truth of it, that's what I am. Um, so I am going to be talking to you a little bit today about how I started with Etsy and my tips and tricks that I have learned along the way and oh my gosh, it's been a learning process. Um, so I'm really excited to share that with you guys. Um, so sorry, I'm just picking up my notes so that I don't forget what I'm saying because I have a mind like a sieve. Um, where are we? <laughs> okay, so to start with, I just wrote 1,000 sales! Yay! Um, which I've basically covered, so I'm going to move on from that. So, it would make the most sense to start by telling you what I actually sell in my shop. Um, so my name is Tink, if you don't know me, and I'm an illustrator based in Dorset in the UK. Um, and I run a shop selling prints of my work mainly, and then I also sell um, greeting cards, stickers, enamel pins, stationery, um, mainly printed versions of my work, basically. Um, this is kind of what I've sold since I started out my shop. When I first started, I didn't even actually know that I wanted to be an illustrator, so um, a lot of my products had more of a graphic design-based focus, so it was more like things I'd designed instead of things I've drawn. Um, and I don't actually think it was, I think I was about a year into the process when I decided, no, I'm doing an illustration shop, I'm only selling illustrated things. Um, and that really helped actually when I was starting out, it really helps to have a niche. And I honestly don't think it matters what that niche is, I think there's room for everything. Um, but you just need to know what you're selling and why. So for me, I'm selling illustrated things because I'm an illustrator and also because I'm really passionate about stationery and printed things. I've always been a complete stationery nerd, which <laughs> you'll know if you know anything about me. Um, so yeah, it just kind of made, made sense for me to, to do that. And it's definitely helped keep the passion levels running high, which again, it's been really hard work. So having like a reason and a, a joyful reason to do it has definitely helped as well. So, I actually made my first sale on the 10th of November 2017, um, which also was the day that I set up my shop. Um, and the reason I made my first sale on the day I set up my shop is because my first sale was from myself. <laughs> Full disclosure, like, I, I'm going to try and be honest in this video, and yeah, my first sale was from myself. One of the um, great things about Etsy as you progress, but one of the challenging things when you are starting out is that um, anyone, even if they aren't signed in, can see how many sales you've made at a seller. So when you're starting out, having zero sales I think is really daunting to new customers because it kind of puts the fear in them of like, am I going to be scammed? Um, or like, is this person going to take my money and run? You know. Um, so yeah I, I made my first sale myself and then I think my first 10 or so sales were from like family and friends obviously um, they're always the first to support us when we do things like this um, and that was definitely the case for me as well but I actually made my first sale to a stranger so someone that I don't know or not through like a friend on the 29th of November so it was 19 days um, from when I launched my shop to when I actually sold my first thing properly, I guess, I would say. <laughs> and the very first things I sold were enamel pins and badges. 
um, which I'm going to pop up on screen and you'll see that they're, well actually one of them is still being sold in my shop and the design has gone on to be really successful and I sell prints of it but the rest of it was more graphic design based. Um, yeah, so not really very illustrated. So I've been drawing for around about a year, I think, when I set up my shop, but I really wasn't taking it very seriously at that point. Um, it was definitely just a hobby, and honestly, I think that the first things I sold were only because my mum asked me if I'd considered doing Christmas cards or stationery or anything, so I kind of put it up for her. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I became obsessed with it because it's a really good feeling. I definitely get that endorphin rush when... I sell something, I find it incredibly satisfying. So I've been drawing for about a year, but I wasn't really taking it very seriously. Um, and I think it, I was doing Etsy for about another year before I really started to see results and I really started getting into it. I think it was Christmas 2018, I actually saw my first quote unquote Christmas rush. Um, and by this I mean instead of selling three sales in the month of November and months of November and December I sold like 20 <laughs> so it, we're not talking like massive volumes here but it was enough of an increase for me to kind of be like actually I am really enjoying this and I think that maybe there might be something here um, so that was kind of the first indicator to me that I wanted to to do things with it um, and yeah, now I'm actually at the point where I can live solely off my Etsy shop. I am paying my rent and my living expenses, um, and at the moment I have a little bit left over, which is really fantastic. So, instead of waxing lyrical about my thoughts, feelings and emotions of running an Etsy shop, I thought that I would just dive straight into talking about things that I wish I knew when I was starting out, and I'm going to also bring in things that I learned along the way that have been really, really helpful. So, the first thing that you will definitely know if you've done any research on Etsy, basically if this isn't the first video on Etsy you've watched, you will know that SEO is incredibly important. Um, this is search engine optimization, and this is basically um, you trying to guess what words people are going to use to search for your product. So for example, um, most of my pieces of work have actual names, like um, wild abandon or feeling thoughtful or like abstract things that mean something to me but no one is going to type those into the search engine to look for the thing so for the wild abandon one for example um i have things like feminist art print and um gift for her and loads and loads of other things but basically you need to try and think what would someone be searching that my listing would show up and they would want to click on it and buy it. That in, is the essence of SEO. Um, because all of Etsy's power comes from it being a search engine and honestly this is probably why I will always have an Etsy shop. Um, even if I branch out and have one on my own website because the fees are slightly less, I genuinely think I will always have an Etsy shop because to this day, I think it bounces between 45 and 55% of all of my traffic comes from within the Etsy search engine. So this is people that are searching for things like art print and are finding my listings and are buying it. And that's traffic that just would not exist if I didn't have an Etsy shop. So for me, that's one of the, the biggest draws of having an Etsy shop. If you want to learn more about SEO, I am going to put a link in the description to a fantastic free course by someone called Fuzzy and Birch. Um, I took this course religiously when I was starting out and it was so helpful. Um, and the other tool that I would recommend to anyone who wants to take their Etsy seriously is Marmalade, which again I'll put the link in the description. But this is basically, um, it helps you figure out what keywords to use because you're not psychic and you can't always guess what other people, you can try um, and it, it works to a point but Marmalade has, has really kind of elevated my, my search engine game. More listings. This was a real turning point for me um, because if you think about it, each listing is another chance for someone to find you in search. So the more listings you have, the more opportunities you have for someone to stumble upon your shop, um, which is completely invaluable really. Um, and if you're thinking, okay, well, how many listings do I need to have? Um, for me, once I hit 50, 
listings, I really saw a, a dramatic increase in my sales. Um, so in my in my opinion and in, in my case, this definitely worked. Um, I now I think have around 85, 90, um, and my aim is for 150. That's kind of what I'm working towards because it really it really does work. Um, so the next point that I'm going to make. And again, this is only really if you want to make art prints and stationery. But the next point I want to make ties in neatly with this is that um, the way I was able to make lots more listings is I bought my own fine art printer. This was probably the single greatest investment I could have made in my business. I think I paid about £600 for an Epson fine art printer, the ink cartridges and the starter paper. Um, and I think I paid it off with the art prints that I made within two months, which was a massive deal for me. It was a really big deal. Um, but what this meant is that I could draw something on my iPad, put it into a mock-up, so like not even print it or pay to have it printed, um, put it into a mock-up and list it on the same day that I drew it. And I did this regularly. Um, and that was how I managed to really scale my listings and get a lot more um, product in my shop. So I am actually going to link that printer in the description, but I would not recommend buying it. Um, I cannot tell you how many issues I had with that printer. And yes, I paid it off, which was fantastic, it was worth the investment, but oh my god I had so many issues. It basically ended up not feeding the paper in properly, um, so I had to manually feed in every single sheet of paper, and even then sometimes it would completely ruin it. Um, so I now, I actually a couple of months ago got a new printer which is a Canon and um, was so much cheaper and the quality is so much better so I'm also going to link that one which I would recommend if you are looking for a printer. Um, one day shipping, this is another thing that transformed my business. It's so much more work um, and I started out shipping one day, one day a week so like Tuesdays was my shipping day but um, once I set every listing to one to three days, one to three business days shipping, my sales increased so much. Um, and it's, it's harder, it's definitely harder. But again, if you're serious about it, I would really consider um, shortening your shipping times because it really makes a difference. Um, it encourages people to buy. So I know I mentioned this earlier, but I'm gonna say it again because it really does bear repeating. Um, find your niche <laughs> and again it doesn't even have to be that specific I don't think but I do also think the more specific you are the better um but figure out who you are <laughs> you know small stuff figure out who you are and why you're doing what you're doing um because the more you can build that kind of brand relationship with customers the better um and this also really helps with your career in general this isn't just um an Etsy tip I guess so I keep getting distracted by this little fluff ball. Mwah. This is Betty, by the way. I don't know if I've introduced her on YouTube yet. And we're on the desk. Good. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> um, yeah, it, it can be a slow grind and it can be a grind full stop on Etsy. Um, I probably had about six months of pure frustration trying to figure out SEO and why I wasn't selling very much and why I was making the sales that I was selling um, but it is like a code and honestly once you've cracked it it's it's just like second nature I feel like now even though I do still pay for and use Marmalade every time I list something I feel like I have the basic knowledge needed to kind of make it possible. Um, I just wanted to add a couple of notes on social media um, in my experience and again I know this isn't the case for everyone Followers do not necessarily equal sales. Um, it's only really recently, and I mean like in the last two months literally, that when I post things on my Instagram now, I actually do make some sales. Um, the entire time running up to that, I would post things and I would maybe make one sale. That would be a really good outcome. So don't get disheartened. And the other thing is, I can post things on my Instagram and they can be insanely popular, like... 4,000 likes for example and then I put them on Etsy and I don't get a single sale so there's not necessarily correlation or causation between what people like and what they buy which is definitely something that I wish I had figured out sooner I guess. 
Etsy is by no means a perfect platform um, and I am by no means a perfect Etsy seller at all. Um, obviously everything that I have said today is my own opinion and what, what's worked for me but I really do hope it's been helpful. Hopefully I've answered a lot of your questions but I did um, put a call out on my Instagram so I just have a few questions that I'm going to try and answer quickly that I haven't covered already. Um, the first is what kind of advertising would you recommend for a shop? So I am an incredibly stingy person um, and in the total running of my shop I think I have not spent more than £20 on advertising um, of any kind. I mainly do advertising on my social media which I wouldn't really call advertising, it's more like sharing what I'm doing um, but I experimented a little bit with paid listings and things like that but if you get your SEO right and you're showing up consistently on like the first two pages of search, I personally don't think it's worth it because um, of the added cost. Like a lot of small businesses run on fairly tight margins price wise so personally that's just not something that I ever wanted to do um, and I have been able to get some really good results from it so don't feel like you have to pay for advertising that's the only way you'll make sales because that's just not true despite Etsy telling you that that's exactly what you need to do. <laughs> How do you pack your parcels? Um, well the first thing I'd say is that I do Etsy order packing in all of my vlogs um, but I only use cardboard, I don't use any plastic in my packaging. Um, I could talk about packaging for so long so I'm not really going to go into it in too much depth here. Um, but if you want me to do a really detailed look at how I pack everything, please let me know. I'm very committed to being as eco-conscious as possible. Um, it's really important to me that people can just take the packaging for their order and then just stick it in the home compost and it will just biodegrade naturally. Um, and yeah, there's like challenge. So I ship all my prints in like vellum envelopes, which is water resistant to prevent damage. But honestly, I don't think I've had a single case where an art print has arrived water damaged, and I have never packaged them in plastic sleeves. So anyone that tells you that you need to is, in my opinion, wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but again, opinions are not facts. <laughs> um, what would be your advice to start out successfully? Um, Honestly, I think the most important thing is make work that you're proud of and get those listing numbers um, above 10 or 20, as high as possibly, as quick as you can because it will make a really big difference. Um, other than that, make sure that you love doing it because there are parts of it that are hard work and it will make them a lot easier. And lastly, I would just say if you want to do it, just fucking go for it. Honestly. Don't let the imposter syndrome tell you that you can't, just do it and it will be a slow start for most people but that's totally fine and you just got to stick at it. Um, thank you so much for watching, I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know if you have any more questions and I will try to answer them in another vlog. Um, or if you want me to focus on a particular part of running my shop, please let me know. Um, I have been Tink and you have been wonderful and I am going to sign off and go pack some Etsy orders.